I always meant to ask, Marcus. And what's that? Why do you like the show? It can't just be Svetlana. Why? Why can't it? So many things in this world are far too complicated. I could give you the long-winded answer. But I still... I still doubt you would understand exactly why. Everything about this particular ballet is perfection. Or about as near perfect as one can get in this life. The contrast of light and dark, good and evil. It's simply captivating. It's the one thing that I haven't minded repeating myself to in my life, knowing Svetlana was there. But now, of course, as I said before, I do not even know if this is really real or just an implantation in my mind at the facility. Marcus, listen to me. You have a choice. You can make this right. Hand yourself in. Bruce, you know I can't do that. I'm not quite ready for my final curtain yet. But speaking of choice, I suppose you have a choice now. We're nearing the latter stage of this performance. Choice? What do you mean? I mean, you decide when the crescendo happens. I, I wouldn't. Wouldn't what? Stand up just yet. Marcus, what have you done? Well, as I said, you wouldn't want to upset the crescendo too early. You want to give the build up that the audience requires. After all, you wouldn't want to set off the landmine I placed beneath your seat too early. Hmm. Continuously, you seem to be under the impression I play a particular way when it comes to the game involving you, Bruce. I underestimated you once. I shan't do it again. You, however, have still failed to place me. I learn perhaps better than any human being on the planet from their mistakes. Marcus, what are you going to do? Well, after the show, I'm going to catch up with an old flame. It's been some considerable time since I said hello. You, however, as I say, have a choice when the crescendo happens. So if you'll excuse me, I have an old flame to catch up with. Take as much time as you want, Bruce. I know certain performances can be riveting. <laughs> Alfred, Marcus placed a landmine under my seat. I'm going to need some specialist equipment to get out of this situation. Certainly, Master Bruce. Is there anything you require of me personally? Just place the equipment outside of the Queen's box. And Marcus himself, where is he currently? Time to catch up with an old flame.
What am I? You know, I'm brought to mind of the old Russian folk tale. The loot player. Heard of it? What? You? Marcus, it... it can't be... The king lived happily with his queen. But after a time, he wanted to seek some glory, so he set out against a wicked king in a neighboring kingdom, but failed, and was imprisoned there instead. He sent a letter to his queen to save him. His queen thought that if she went herself, the wicked king would take her as one of his wives, so she cut her hair dressed herself as a boy, and set out with her lute. She reached the court of the wicked king and charmed him with her music. He promised her whatever she wished, and she said she wanted a companion, and asked for one of his prisoners. He let her choose, and of course she picked the king. They went back to their country without him ever discovering who she was. Now, as you may know, the story ends with the king thinking that the queen had not saved him, had not been faithful. So good was her disguise, of course, <laughs> and skill with music. When it's revealed who she is after performing the same trick on him, they lived happily ever after. Marcus, my, my love, I... Now, I cannot decide which king exactly I am in this a story of ours. Marcus, please. Am I the wicked king you didn't want? And I was just captured and enamored by your music? Or am I the husband you actually did want? Marcus, please. Don't do this. What they did to you, I fought them every day. Every time they asked me to perform for you. I wanted to help you. Oh, my dear little Mealy. What they did to me. Hmm. I thought your music and grace was about as near to freedom as I could possibly get. It set me free. Set me free of my constant memory set me free of the confines of the Im <sighs> of the impending misery of the treatments set me free from the bars I always seem to find myself around bars of prisons the bars of asylum was it all the same But they did their work well, love. I now no longer know what is true or what is false. Whether the horrors I committed in my youth are even real and not planted. If Svetlana <laughs> is even your real name. Marcus, don't do this. Of course it was real. I now know what I need to do, my Mealy. No, to please. To set me ultimately free. Start anew. For you, unlike the story, did not come to my rescue when I needed my queen most. No, please. Set me free now. My Mealy.
The trees are in their autumn beauty. The woodland paths are dry. Under the October twilight, the water mirrors a still sky. Upon the brimming water, among the stones are nine and fifty swans. The nineteenth autumn has come since I made my first count. I saw before I had well finished all suddenly melt and scatter wheeling in great broken rings upon their glamorous rings. I have looked upon those brilliant creatures and now my heart is sore. Now they drift on the still water, mysterious, beautiful. Among what rushes they were built, by what lake's edge or pool delight men's eyes. When I awake some day to find that they have flown. Yes, Doctor, it is a poem about swans. <laughs> oh, I should have known that you'd be there. The moment that Bruce called his butler for help, I'm sure you would have known instantly what I would have done. You're far more clever than you give yourself credit for, you know. You're the poem. It's by an Irish poet called William Yeats. He wrote it during the First World War. Not particularly sure why. Perhaps the swans represent some kind of inevitable change as so many of their kind do. Or perhaps, perhaps he simply loved swans. <laughs> Where is Fernanda? Well, she did play the swan. So she's where she needs to be. Yes. I sent her to swim. Doctor, what are you do? Do you still not understand? Even when Svetlana lies in your arms, it matters not. Because you were the swan. You were the swan, always. It was you. It was always you. I thought at first Svetlana was the true infatuation, but it wasn't. It was the swan, Doctor. The swan. Transformative and beautiful. It was the swan. And you. <laughs> oh, Doctor. <laughs> It was always you.